Hello, everyone. This is the lecture for section 3.7, Improper Integrals. Okay, so uh, in this section, we're going to take a little bit of a step back. Uh, it's actually going to be sort of easier integrals. Uh, we'll be using a fair amount of our previous theory for this section, okay? Um, this deals with integrals that uh, either uh, go to infinity on either end, right, or um, integrals where one of the limits of integration uh, heads to a discontinuity somehow, okay? Whether it be a jump uh, discontinuity um, or an infinite discontinuity, okay? So that's what we're gonna deal with. Those are what we call improper integrals, okay? So to illustrate sort of the fact of what you guys are gonna do, right? Uh, I have an integral that I want you guys to compute. This one, the very first thing you guys are gonna be doing uh, is a quick check, okay? I want you guys to compute this integral, right? But notice that I don't define the value a. I actually change the value a, right? From one to a tenth, to a hundredth, to a thousandth, to 10,000, okay? Uh, I don't want you to compute, compute them, right? In terms of calculus, I don't want to use, I don't want anybody, using, you're more than welcome to if you want. Um, but what I do want people to do sort of complete this table using uh, the QR code. This is basically the uh, the definite integral calculator that you've been using for a little while, okay? Um, and I want you guys to fill in the integral for each one of these, okay? For each one of these A values, okay? Cool? Okay, so uh, after you fill it out, okay, what I want you guys to notice is something, right? Uh, you notice that my A values, right? All of these values, they tend toward zero, right? And I want you guys to sort of notice what's happening as the values, I want you guys to notice what's happening when these values get plugged in. These end up heading somewhere, okay? I don't wanna give away the answer, uh, but they're heading somewhere, right? Uh, this integral, right? Uh, the a value is tending towards zero because it's one, you know, it's starting at one, it's going to a, a thousand, uh, it's going to 10,000, right? And if we keep going, right, these a values are going to something much, much smaller. They're tending towards zero. So what I want you guys to do when you look at this, right, I want you guys to look at the uh, the direction of the uh, the integrals themselves, okay? You'll see that they're going somewhere, okay? Because of this kind of integral, right? This is the reason why we have what is called an improper integral. So it's essentially, how do we work with integrals, right? That head toward a discontinuity or uh, if they head to positive or negative infinity, if one of the limits of integration is either positive or ne negative infinity, okay? So let me first define, right? Something here, any integral, if you have an integral a to b of f of x, right? where either a or b is a discontinuity of your function, right? Or is equal to positive or negative infinity. It doesn't matter which one, okay? Either, whether it be a or whether it be b or both. Um, if any one of those is uh, positive or negative infinity, you have what we call an improper integral, okay? So that's the definition of an improper integral. Now let's go ahead and go through, um, how we go ahead and sort of resolve them, okay? And that's the next thing down, okay? Uh, and this thing has a couple of definitions in it, okay? So suppose that you want to integrate over uh, an interval a to infinity, right? So then that integral is gonna look like this, right? And the proper way to solve it is we end up changing that upper limit into t, and then we take uh, the limit as t goes to infinity. Okay, and then likewise, if you want to integrate over negative infinity to b, right, then that integral is going to look like that. We do the exact same thing uh, to, uh, to find that integral, okay? Cool? All right. So uh, I'm going to introduce a little bit of language here that we're going to end up using later on when we get into series and sequences, okay? Um, so suppose, right, if this limit exists, right, if this limit, either one, this one or this one, 
okay, exists, right? Then we say that the proper in uh, the improper integral is said to converge to a value L. So it converges to a particular value, okay? If it does not exist, okay, then that improper integral is said to diverge, which is the opposite of converge. So you can also look at it as it does not converge to a particular value L, okay? It's that simple, okay? And then the last thing, okay, the, the two integrals above, right, this one, starts at a value and then goes off to infinity, right? And this one starts off at negative infinity up to a value, right? So that's when either the top limit or the bottom limit of integration is a uh, positive or negative infinity, correct? Okay, but there are integrals that are sort of double-ended that go from all the way from negative infinity to positive infinity, right? And so what is that, right? Uh, and in order to solve those out, right, you can choose any value A anywhere, right? It doesn't matter where, but that integral is now split up into two, right? So it can go from negative infinity to that value A plus A to infinity. So basically you can choose any value in between any value from negative infinity to positive infinity and split it along that value. Okay, it's that simple. Okay, so now, and same thing happens, right? If either one of these, if this one or this one diverges, then the entire thing diverges, right? If both of them converge, then the integral converges. But, but if either one, right, if either one, uh, this one or this one, diverge, then the entire thing diverges, okay? Okay, so now, how do we solve these out? So uh, I've, got an, I've got an example here at least, right? Uh, and I've got the picture of the graph uh, right next, you know, on the right-hand side there. Um, we're still doing what, you know, the, the idea of an integral is, right? We are still trying to find uh, the area under the curve, right? But instead of stopping at a specific point, we're continuing on till infinity in this case, right? So the area for this example right here, right, is still the area that you would think it'd be, I'm gonna try to draw it in. I know it's really, really tiny, but you know, the one is right here, right? And we still want all of this. This is all of the area that we're still looking for, right? But we're saying that this line now continues on that way. Right, so what is that area, okay? So the way that we go ahead and solve this, right, is going to be like this. We have to turn this thing into the limit, right? So uh, limit as t goes to infinity of the integral from one to t of four over the fourth root of x, okay? Cool. So then now, uh, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna be playing around with the, the integral portion, this bit, right? I can still use my integral stuff separately, right? So limit as t goes to infinity, right? Of the integral from one to t, whoops, one, right? I'm gonna do the rewrite of the integral. So this is gonna be four, right? Uh, x to the negative one fourth d, oh, and I forgot a dx here, dx, right? I can do the limit or I can do the integral here, right? So limit as t goes to infinity, right? I'm gonna just perform the integral, right? So this is gonna be four uh, x to the three fourths divided by three fourths, all evaluated from one, to t, right? I'm gonna clean it up a little bit just so that it looks nicer. Limit t goes to infinity, infinity, right? Of 16 x to the three fourths all over three evaluated from one 
the t. So now I'm going to do the evaluation. I haven't even taken care of this limit yet, right? So this is now equal to the limit. T goes to infinity. I haven't resolved the limit yet, so I'm, gonna, I'm about to do that. But I'm going to do the evaluation of this thing. So it's going to be the top one minus the bottom one, right? So it's going to be 16 t to the 3 fourths over 3, right? Minus 16 1 to the 3 fourths over 3. That's me evaluating the limit, just this portion right here. I'm going to highlight it in blue. That is that. That's it. Okay. So now I have an expression that I can use some Calc 1 knowledge on, right? So if you take a look at this, right, if you take a look at this, this entire statement that's right here, right, if you take a look at that entire statement that's right there, uh, we're taking the limit as t goes to infinity. The only thing that has t going to infinity that, that has a t in it is that thing, the very front term, right? And if you remember from Calc 1, right, um, as t goes to infinity, uh, for t to any power, right, uh, it's going to tend toward infinity itself. So what, what do I mean by that? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and split this up a limit. I'm just using, this is strictly calc one knowledge now. I'm splitting up the expression here, right? Uh, 16t3 to the fourth over 3. And this is just going to be minus 16 over 3, right? This thing right here, that thing right there is going to be infinity, right? So this is going to be infinity minus 16 over 3. And since it's already infinity, it's infinity. There we go. There's our answer. So that means, that means that if we take this integral, if we want the area under the curve from here all the way down, right? Because that's what we were doing. We want this area, right? It is unbounded. The area just continually grows and grows and grows. It is an infinite area. Okay, that's it. That is all of it. Okay, let me do one more example. So again, same idea, okay? Uh, x e to the negative x squared, okay? So I got a graph of it on the uh, <clears throat> on the right hand side. You can notice that. Let me go back up to the first one, right? That area looks like it doesn't get any smaller. It just stays sort of. It, it's still just big, right? It doesn't seem like it tapers off enough to make any difference, if if that makes any sense, right? Now this one, this area, if you take a look at it, right? We still want this area, right? And we want it from zero to infinity. So we want all of this, but it, this area does taper off. If you guys, if you guys see that, right? So if we want this area, right? If you take a look at this bit over here, right? This is asymptotic over there, right? So there should be a very, very small area there, right? it looks like it tapers off enough so that it becomes sort of insignificant when you attach it to the entire thing, right? Cool? So that's what we're gonna find out. So let's go ahead and uh, do this calculation really quick. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Uh, I'm gonna do the limit as t goes to infinity, right, of the integral from zero to t of x e to minus x squared dx, right? Okay, so now for this integral right here, hopefully you guys see it already. This is an integration, it's a u substitution. So if you get, let a u equal negative x squared, okay, then a negative du over two is equal to x dx, that produces this. Uh, limit t goes to infinity of negative 1 half e to the minus x squared, evaluated from 0 to t. OK, I'm going to go ahead and 
this portion right here, I'm going to go ahead and evaluate that. Okay. Uh, so this is going to be now equal to limit as t goes to infinity of negative one half e to the negative t squared. Right. It's going to be the top minus the bottom. So minus uh, negative one half. I forgot a negative there. Let me actually rewrite that so it looks nicer. Negative negative one half, right, e to the negative zero squared. Okay. Now, this thing right here, uh, e, well, let me start with this. Uh, zero squared is zero, negative zero is still zero, e to the zero is now one, and then that's going to be times a negative a half, right? So that's going to turn into a negative a half, and there's going to be a, there's a negative of a negative going on. So let me do this limit. T goes to infinity, right? Negative one half E, the negative T squared, okay? Plus one half, okay? So I evaluated this thing, right? I'm gonna try to color coordinate this stuff. The blue is the blue, okay? So we have this for now. We have this statement down here, this one right here, okay? Now I wanna look at this thing. I wanna look at that limit term, the thing that has the T sort of ingrained in it, right? Okay, so now, uh, this is sort of a little bit of a, you know, really quick refresher about, you know, um, uh, calc one, right? So let's go ahead, that term in pink, let's go ahead and take that uh, as t goes to infinity, right? So if t goes to infinity, okay, let me actually, let me start highlighting this how I want you guys to see it. If t goes to infinity, that means that t goes to infinity, right? We good? Therefore, t squared goes to infinity. Therefore, negative of t squared goes to negative infinity, okay? And then finally, since this exponent goes to negative infinity, so it's going to large negative numbers, right? E to negative large numbers means that that thing that whole thing is going to zero. So this portion right here, this, essentially, when you take the limit of it, heads to zero. So what you have now is this, that once you evaluate this entire limit here, once you evaluate this entire limit right here, you end up getting zero plus one half, and that is equal to one half. And lo and behold, actually, that is our answer for this. So now, how is this supposed to look like, right? So what I want to do now is I want to open up my definite integral calculator. Let me pull it in from my separate screen here. You guys get to see my messiness. Uh, okay. Let me zoom out a little bit. I can show you guys what I'm talking about. And let me actually put both the screens up there we go. All right, that'll work. So let me do the first one first. I'm gonna do four divided by the fourth root of X, right? And I'm gonna re do the, uh, enter it in as the rewrite. So four X to the negative one divided by four, four. So you guys hopefully see that the, the picture on the, uh, no, let me not do that, there we go. Hopefully you guys see that the picture on the right sort of matches the picture that's right here in our notes, right? So now I wanna do the integral as it goes from one to infinity, right? My A limit of integration, my bottom limit of integration is gonna be the one. So I'm gonna make the A equal to one, drag that over to one, okay? I'm gonna reposition this a little bit. I'm gonna squish this a little bit. I'm gonna stretch it out a little bit. It's sort of front and center, there we go, okay. Hopefully you guys see what's going on already. I'm squishing it more. It doesn't seem like it's tapering off nearly at all. So 
we do the area for this, right? It's not going to be pretty. It's not going to, it's not going to go away. So uh, I need it to go to infinity. So unfortunately my tick marker here for B, right? Only goes to 10, right? So just in case I'm going to add a zero here, right? Just to, to prove the point here. So now I can drag it all the way over to 100. Right, and if you guys look at this area right here, the uh, answer, the numerical answer, answer for the integral at, let me start at 10 again. At 10, it's 24 and change, right? Let me go to 20. Now it's 45 and change. Let me go to 50. It's 94 and change. Let me go all the way to 100. It's 163 and change, right? Let me add another zero to my, to my, uh, to my, uh, to my slider for B, right? It's already at 163 and change. Let me drag it some more. Let me drag it to 250, 329, almost 330, right? If I keep going, look at the area. It just keeps growing and growing and growing, right? And that is actually what happens if I were able to create this thing and drag my uh, B limit all the way out to infinity, it's gonna grow without bound. So the area under the curve between one to infinity for uh, four X to the negative a fourth is not bounded. It is infinite. Okay. So now let's try out the next one. The, the next example that I gave you guys right here. Okay. Same thing. Uh, I'm going to do X E to the negative X squared squared. There we go. Okay, and I'm just going to zoom in here, right? I'm going to go ahead and squish this a little bit so you guys can see what I'm talking about. There we go. Okay. And we only want from zero to infinity, right? So I'm going to grab my A value and just bring that back to zero, right? I'm going to grab this, bring it all the way back over here. I'm going to do it. Uh, let me, nope. Let me switch this to 10, <laughs> right? So now I'm back to, you know, in our good old regular area, right? Okay. I'm going to go ahead and I want the integral from zero to infinity, right? So I'm going to drag this all out, right? And I want you guys to take a look at this area, right? So at one, it's uh, 0.316, right? Let me take it to two. It's already 0.49. Let me take it to three, 0.49999, to four. 0.49, it's bigger and bigger, right? It, it's getting closer to something. You guys see that? And I keep dragging it out and it just gets finer and finer. It doesn't take very long. It actually takes maybe 5.4, 5.5, and you're already at half. You're already at a half. And that is exactly the answer that we got, okay? So that's the point of uh, improper integrals. We're trying to take this integral all the way out to infinity, right? And does it converge? Does it converge to a specific value or does it diverge? Does it just tend off to infinity, right? Uh, the first one diverged. The second one would converge to a half, okay? All right, so now let me zoom back into our notes. Whoa, too far, okay. Uh, the next two, <clears throat> so everybody's got two to do. Um, the first two are, uh, super simple, um, they're super simple um, uh, trick substitute, uh, U substitution, sorry. Um, so try them out, see what happens, cool. Uh, and then the, the one for everyone, this one's supposed to be an integration by parts. Try it out the same way, uh, the answer should be the same. You can double check your answer using uh, the definite integral calculator. So you can even put it in first, see what you're supposed to get, and then try out the math, okay? Okay, cool. So moving on, okay? Uh, the examples that I did above, they had you doing limits when the integral goes out to a positive infinity or a negative infinity, okay? Uh, we haven't covered uh, what happens when we take the improper integral, right, of a function that has a certain type of discontinuity at a specific value, uh, a, b, c, d, right? 
Okay, so that's what this definition deals with. So suppose f of x uh, is a continuous function, right? Except at a specific value, right? Then for any integral over an interval a to b, right? So in this case, we're saying that b is a, a certain discontinuity, right? Uh, whether it be an infinite discontinuity, sort of like sort of like your one over x, sort of like the ones that do this. You guys remember the whoosh, the double swoosh, right? So something that does this down here or this up here, right? Or the other one, right? If you do the double swoosh in the same direction, the like this, right? So whenever that happens, we have to do it this way, okay? That what we do is that integral, do the improper integral, we do exactly how we did before, right? But we're looking at it from a specific side. So notice how we're doing from a value A to a value B, which would be our discontinuity, right? And we're doing it from the negative side, got it? And then likewise, if let's say A, the bottom end is our discontinuity, right? Then the, the improper integral would be done this way. He approaches A from the positive side, right? Same idea. Uh, look at me go, converge, converge. Okay, uh, if the limits exist, it's said to converge. If they don't, they are said to diverge. That's it, okay? And then last thing, very, very last thing. Suppose you have to take an integral, right? From A to B, right? And you have a point C where there's a discontinuity. So uh, what do I mean by that? So let's, let's take the double swoosh, right? The swoosh that way and then swoosh this way, right? Uh, hopefully you guys remember from pre-calc, maybe there's an asymptote right here, right? And let's say you want to take the integral from A you know, to B, right? But there's that pesky value C in between. There's a pesky value C where your discontinuity is happening, right? Then that is equivalent to basically splitting up the integral and going from A to C first and then doing from C to B, right? And then for each one of those, using the associated uh, limit version for the improper integral, okay? Cool. And then the last thing, right? This integral, that integral converges, right? If these two converge, right? AKA, if any one of the two integrals on the right-hand side diverge, then your integral diverges as well. That's simple, that simple, cool. So how do you do these? And now what I wanna do is do the exact integral that uh, I made you guys do earlier in, um, in the section, right? So for that one, it's exactly how you'd expect it to go, okay? So equal to, we're gonna do ahead, go ahead and do the limit that we're supposed to do. So it's gonna be the limit, right? As T approaches zero, and we're gonna to have to do it from the positive side, right? Of the integral from T to one of one over X dx, okay? Super simple integral there. So limit T goes to zero from the positive side of ln of x from t to one, okay? I evaluate that limit. I evaluate, sorry, the, I evaluate the, um, the integral portion. So I still haven't resolved the limit yet. So it's still t goes to zero from the positive side, right? It's the top minus the bottom. So it's gonna be uh, ln of one minus the ln of t. Okay, uh, I can distribute the limit. That's back from calc one, right? So, uh, and limit, or sorry, the ln of one, that is zero. So that's gonna be zero minus the limit as t goes to zero from the positive side, right? Of ln of t. 
Cool. This has already been resolved, so that's no big deal, right? What I want to look at is this, right? So we are looking, we are trying to evaluate the limit as t approaches zero from the positive side of ln of t. If you guys remember the graph of ln of t, right? So I'm going to draw a quick sketch of it, but ln of t, the, the, the graph for ln does something like this. It goes a swoosh like this, right? Okay, so now we are trying to find the ln of t as t approaches zero from the positive side. So we are, this is, this is a, if you guys remember calc one, maybe first, second week, what's happening with my, uh, y value, what, what's happening with my ln of t values as my t goes to zero from the positive side, they are nose diving. That is a negative infinity. So this is going to be zero, uh, zero minus a negative infinity. And then for arguments purposes, right, that those two positives or those two negatives turn into positive. So this should be positive infinity. Okay. And lo and behold, that is the answer. That you're supposed to get. So uh, the quick check from the very beginning, okay, has you doing uh, this integral, right? And uh, as you moved your cursor closer and closer, as you started uh, computing uh, the integral, as it went from one to a tenth to a hundredth to a thousandth, the area, right, uh, sort of increased without bound. Right, you, it just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, right? And that makes complete sense because the integral, right, the area is uh, positive infinity. Okay, and again, let me go ahead and do the da -da 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 -da, this thing. I'm gonna do one over x here. Okay, one divided by x, right? So as it stands, it is undefined, right? But I'm going to go ahead and put uh, my a. So I'm going to put my b as one, right? And then my a, I'm going to do one. That area is uh, is supposed to be zero. That's fine. So now, point one, right? That's two point three, and I'm going to just start adding zeros in between. Point oh one four, point double oh one. That's almost seven, right? I'm going to add one more zero. 9.21, you guys see what's happening, right? So as my A value gets closer and closer to uh, zero, right? The area for that curve doesn't stop growing. I can add as many zeros now as possible. Now it's just not even computing, it's just saying it's undefined, right? But you guys can see that it just didn't stop growing, right? The farthest that I got was 20.7, right? Uh, so the area is unbounded, and rightfully so. This area just continues without bound. It's it never stops. So this integral would diverge. Okay. Last thing up, one more quick check. So these deal with uh, if you take a look, all of these, uh, if you graph them, uh, tend toward a discontinuity, right? Um, try them out. Okay. Uh, go ahead and submit these uh, for your quick checks and I'll look at them and uh, choose out a couple for our notes, okay? Um, besides that, that is it. Next that's up is lecture questions. Uh, these have uh, some more, same thing. Some of them you might need to do um, uh, integration by parts. I think the first two, these two, you're gonna need to do integration by parts, okay? If you have any questions on them, uh, drop me a line, come by my office hours or come by my Friday times, cool? Uh, besides that, I am done here, happy studying.